Hi friends, welcome back to the channel, Faith and Arrow Homestead. We're actually not on the homestead today though. We are on my parents' property, my parents' little homestead. And we're gonna talk about something today that is actually controversial. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm really nervous. I'm actually like literally shaking a little bit. My mouth is dry, I've got my water. I, um, whew, I feel led to talk about this. And so I will, because I am obedient, but I am nervous about it. Okay, um, I had thought about maybe doing an outline for this video, but I decided not to because I really want this to flow from the heart and um, I just want to see kind of where the Holy Spirit leads us in this conversation. So speaking of the Holy Spirit, that's where we will start. I have been feeling very uncomfy lately. Um, I have been feeling very disturbed, very uncomfortable, um, just kind of in my spirit when it comes to the idea of preparedness. Now, even just right there, I know that some of you are probably going to click off of this video. That word preparedness is a bit of a buzzword. Um, please hang in there with me just a little bit longer, okay, please? Um, I am a homesteader, and I think naturally with being a homesteader, there is a level of preparedness that comes with that because it's just the nature of it. You know, part of being a homesteader means putting up food, canning, dehydrating, freeze drying, um, freezer meals perhaps, um, raising your own animals. If you butcher your own chickens, often you have 20 to 50 of them at a time or more. Those are being stored somewhere. Um, if you're butchering your own beef, you've got a year's plus worth of beef stored somewhere. If you have your own fruit trees, you're preserving apples through the winter time. If you garden potatoes and onions and garlic through the winter time. So there's a measure of preparedness just innately built into homesteading, right? And, and I do, I am talking about that, but I, I do want to go just a teensy bit beyond that. And so what, what I'm about to discuss with you is not doomsday prepping. It's not hoarding everything that you can buy um, for a, 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 some sort of disaster. That's not what I'm talking about. But it also just isn't simply homesteading either. There's something in the middle here that I want to try to get to. Here's why, okay? And this is the part that makes me nervous because this is not a political YouTube channel. And it's never going to be a political YouTube channel. I am outspokenly a Christian on this YouTube channel, however, and I don't think necessarily that it's a bad thing to be outspoken sometimes when you have a platform, as long as it's thoughtful and well-intentioned. And this is, I'm not attacking, I'm not trying to cause strife, um, I'm not trying to argue, I am just simply trying to share something with you, my audience, that has been weighing on me heavily. So please understand that I am not going to get into political opinions in this video. I am just going to say that I am feeling a lot of um, tension and um, hate. I'm literally shaking. <laughs> This is really hard for me. Literally like I'm feeling like tears well up in my eyes. I don't know how to convey to you what I'm feeling in my heart without it coming out controversial. So I'm just gonna say it. I'm feeling a lot of tension and hate and I'm feeling that politically right now, it is very personal. I, I'm feeling that it's very personal and Maybe it's my age. Maybe I've just been naive and ignorant to it in the past and only this election season and is my eyes really open to it. But it does seem to me that it's beyond just, um, oh yeah, you know, I this this sounds good for the country. This stuff, we don't like high gas prices and you know, this and that about this and that and this rule suits us, but this one, it, it's not just so cavalier. It's very much, if you don't believe this, you're racist. If you don't believe that you're blank phobic, enter anything there, phobic. If you don't go along with this, you're a bigot. If you don't go along with that, you're small minded. It's becoming very personal and it's becoming very, you know, if you're not on this side, then you're our enemy. Like it's not just that your ideas aren't as good. You are our enemy. We are against you. 
And again, I'm trying to keep opinions out of this. I'm not trying to share political opinions. That's not the point of this. Okay, so that's number one, because I'm going, there's a lot of different things that's feeding into the way that I'm feeling. So that's one thing. The other thing is, um, I'm hearing a lot of, and I don't know how true this is, and I don't know if it's just fear mongering and rumors, but I'm hearing a lot of, um, you know, that perhaps there might be another illness that comes around because it's the election season and that might sway voters one way or the other. I'm hearing about like the, the bird flu and things like that. Um, or perhaps a resurgence of COVID. I don't know if that's something that could happen. I'm just hearing it. I think the one that's really weighing on me the heaviest that somehow nobody's talking about that I'm like very in your face is that the government is cracking down on raising your own food like majorly. I went to an Azure pickup today. That's what's in front of me. And we're going to talk about all this in a moment. I went to an Azure pickup today and one of the women were just telling me how a friend of hers, local to me, here in New York, around here, had all of their chickens seized. Okay, and then um, just earlier this year, a few months ago, there was that whole thing with that dairy being raided and all of their stuff confiscated. And not that long ago, um, processing facilities were being burned to the ground. It's still happening. And it's just not, it's being swept under the rug. It's not being talked about. Okay, well, all of these things combined, the the tension and the just very clear, like, hate that's happening in our country right now, the if you don't think like me, you're the enemy mindset that's going on right now, and the potential for more illnesses, um, COVID, bird flu, whatever, paired with the fact that us trying to produce our own food is literally openly under attack. It's just all making me feel very nervous, not fearful. And I actually, I'm so upset with myself, I forgot to bring my study Bible uh, because my study Bible said something that I really loved, but I can still find the verse at least. So, okay, I found it. It's Isaiah 8, 11 through 13. It says, this is what the Lord says to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of this people. Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. He will be a holy place. And I read that not yesterday, but the day before, knowing full well that I was going to be filming this today. So I've just had like little things here and there that I'm like, okay, nope, I am supposed to talk about this. Um, and that verse really stood out to me from the fear standpoint, because that's the other thing that makes this controversial. I hear so many people talk about, um, oh, that's fear mongering. That's fear mongering. And I don't want to fear monger. But I also don't want people saying don't fear monger to be meant as a way to oppress me sharing something that I think I'm supposed to, to share. So I'm not fear mongering. I am simply sharing something that's on my heart and we'll get to where I'm going with this, what I'm hoping it will inspire in you as we continue on in this video. But before we get to that, I just need you to know I'm not afraid. I fully trust that our God has this all well in hand. He has this entire nation well in hand, this entire world well in hand. He has this election well in hand. I'm not afraid. More so, we serve a God who provides for his children. He dresses the lilies. He clothes us. He watches over the sparrows. He loves us. I'm not worried. I know He knows that we have to eat. He will provide for us. And I truly, truly believe that. So I am not afraid. And I have not felt afraid. I, you know, pray a lot and I read the Bible a lot and I try to be really in tune with the Holy Spirit. And so I'm feeling this urging and this discomfort in my spirit, but I don't feel afraid. I don't feel desperate. And we're going to talk about that more as we move on. But I just wanted to say that before we get into this, I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm not trying to work anybody up into a frenzy. I just want to make you aware. Here's why. This is what I think is happening. COVID has most more or less passed, right? The fear of it and the urgency of it and the in your faceness of it has passed. And people are going, they're reverting back to the way that they were before COVID happened. How do I know that? 
myself and all of my homesteading gardening friends are seeing massive decreases in the engagement in our channels because people are less interested in this type of content now and farmers are struggling again to, to sell their products when before they were selling out they were rapidly expanding they're selling less and people are going back to eating fast food they're going back to shopping once a week at the grocery store they're going back to doing all of the, these things and when i was having this conversation with my parents i told them no now is the time to to push through to continue on this path don't give it up don't be only um cognizant and aware of these principles when something's going wrong this is a lifestyle and to whatever degree it suits you and your family i'm not saying that everybody has to have a milk cow in a massive garden but to whatever degree it suits you and your family you should still care about where your food is coming from just because covid is more or less behind us does not make our food system any less broken and back to the things that i was trying to introduce to you moments ago i still think there is concern and reason to um, care about self-sustainability and um, preparedness. I know that preparedness is a buzzword, but there's really no better word for it, preparedness. Um, and I just, I worry that there are a whole host of people who are like, okay, we COVID's behind us. We can skip the farmer's market and go back to Walmart and get our groceries and not worry about tomorrow. And I just, I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling very much that we need to stay the course and we need to continue investing in this way of life. We need to continue trying to fix the broken food system, investing in our farmers, learning how to cook from scratch, growing the gardens, having the chickens, all of these things, preserving the food, canning the peaches, doing all of the things so that we are not taken by surprise again as we were with COVID. So many people were not prepared. I was not prepared. Many, most, I'd say the majority of people were not prepared for the grocery store shelves to go bare. And so what, we just think that that's over? That's done? That's never gonna happen again? There's no reason to be prepared for a day when there isn't food on the grocery store shelves? That could still happen. Again, you know, there's all of these things. There's an election coming up. Uh, people are having their chickens confiscated and their raw milk operations shut down and farmers are being put out. It's still happening. Processing plants are being burned down. It's still happening. There are still reasons why we should care about this. And so I myself have been getting lax um, in some instances and others not. Like the garden is doing really well this year and I'm planning, I'm putting up all this food. I have a whole food preservation plan. And so in that way, I am still being prepared, but I had definitely gone stagnant in building up my food stores and continuing to um, uh, uh, broaden my infrastructure in terms of being self-sustainable and an operating homestead. I was getting lax. I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm happy with where we are. I, you know, I, I, I get some things bulk. I do some cooking from scratch. We've been eating out more. We've been going to the grocery store more. It's just been, it's just, I get it. I understand why it's happening because you don't have that push, that urgency to do any other alternative. So, I mean, I, I get it, but guys, we really, really have to stay the course. Okay, so there's my defense into why I feel so much better. I literally already feel better that, that those words are out of me because I've been so stressed about sharing that with you because I, I, I know, I know it's controversial. Nobody wants to hear about the election. Nobody wants to hear the word preparedness. Like, I get it. I understand. Um... Okay, so with this being said, I shared this with my mom, my dad too, but I had like an hour and a half long conversation about this with my mom and she agreed and she understood where I was coming from. And so her and I have kind of come up with a plan. It's really nice when you've got friends or family members that you can do this with because then not all of the um, pressure is on you. So they're kind of doing their own thing. And there's a couple things that we're going to do together. I'm going to start by sharing with you a food storage list that I've made. These are items that to me are essential to have prepared in my food storage, ready to go. Um, and those are flour slash wheat berries, meat, mason jars and lids, sugar, salt, peanut butter, which peanut butter is the luxury item. I always buy a lot of peanut butter, dried beans, pasta, rice, oats, water and first aid kit. Those are the things that I think are essential. We absolutely have to have them 
and I am going to go out of my way to keep them always stocked. So I have kind of arbitrarily in my mind set a deadline for this for the election. Now that's not to say that once that date has passed, I'm just going to stop thinking about this. It's just that it's given me a goal. So between now and basically the end of the year, I want to really focus my efforts into beefing up this. And so I had my very first Azure order um, and I waited until today to film this so I could have some things in front of me here. I'm going to be placing an Azure order every single month between now and the end of the year because what I don't want anybody to have to do is go rush out and spend a grand on buying all of these things because it's last minute and you can start to see that shiz is hitting the fan. Like That's not what I wanna do. I wanna be able to space this out I want to take my time. I want to be at peace about it. I don't want to fear, feel fearful or desperate. And so I am releasing this now, even though I think that perhaps things could flare up months from now, because I think it's important that we kind of get started on this now. So in this order, I have a bag of a 25 pound bag of cane sugar and a 25 pound bag of hard white wheat berries. I have decided that every month, every Azure order, I am going to purchase at least two large bags of something. Flour, sugar, wheat berries, salt, oats, rice. I'm going to get big old bags of something every month, two. Two every month. And if I do that between now and the end of the year, that is potentially 12-ish bags of something and that's great for a family of just me and Tom and then sharing with my parents and my siblings if needed that is not bad and it's spread out so I'm not trying to buy 12 25 or 50 pound bags of something all at once it's spread out over nearly half a year um, so there's that also I got this big block of cheese um, cheese to me is a luxury item but it is also a um, protein slash dairy product and it's something that I definitely want to keep stocked. We have a deep freezer. We are very fortunate to have a deep freezer. And so I will be purchasing a big block of cheese, one of these, every single month. And the, uh, since I'm not home, I can't show you what, I'm, what I would do. But I'm going to cut this into four uh, separate pieces. And I'm going to keep one chunk in the fridge at a time. And the rest I will keep in the freezer. Because um, learn from my previous mistake. This does not stay, unless you have a humongous family, this does not stay good in the fridge long enough to go through it. My husband and I, it's just the two of us in the house, and um, this went moldy before I could get through it when I bought, the last time I bought one. Um, so learn from my mistake. Uh, separate it, take what you're going to use, put the rest in the freezer. Um, I have butter. I, we go through a lot of butter. Um, I do make butter using the cream skimmed off of the raw milk that I get from a local farm. So I am constantly adding butter and that is the butter that I actively use. However, um, butter and cheese I know were hard to come by during the pandemic and they're expensive. Um, so I like the idea of adding butter and cheese a little at a time every month and just building up my stores. So these three blocks of uh, butter, I'm not, I'm going to put them in my deep freeze and I'm not going to use them unless I absolutely have to. But I, like I said, I pretty much keep the butter moving in my house pretty well by making my own every two weeks using the cream off my raw milk. So this should be able to just go right into my food stores and not be messed with. And I'll be adding to that every month. Um, and then I've just been shopping the sale area of Azure and they had their whole wheat organic spaghetti uh, pasta noodles on sale. And so I was able to get three boxes of these, but I did it because it's a really good example of, um, because pasta was on, pasta and rice were on the list. And so I will be adding either pasta or rice some um, something that falls under that category into my Azure cart every single month so that I can continue to work on my stores. Because if, if push comes to shove, I've got noodles, butter, and cheese. That is a meal. <laughs> and then um, it's not on the list, but I am just going to get some sort of cleaning supply. This is um, uh, fragrance-free dishwasher gel. I like this stuff from Azure. 
um, as well as their hand soap and things like that. So I will just be adding one to the cart every month just to kind of keep that growing and keep that moving. Do you see how the point is to just have some sort of plan? What works for your family? What does your family consume? Um, and just start building on that. And I want you to, to realize that this is not doomsday prepping. That's not what this is. And that's what I mean when I say we're somewhere in the middle here because I didn't grow any of this. Um, and I'm also not putting it away for the apocalypse. My family is going to consume these things. Bird flu or not, uh, election gone awry or not, like we're going to use these items. So I am just really, really, really trying to share with everybody, don't stop now. Just because COVID is behind us does not mean that we can just, okay, well, we're, we go to the grocery store once a week. We have three days worth of food in our house and nothing else. Please don't go back to that. That was never a good idea. Even pre-COVID, that is not a good idea. That is not a good way to keep a functioning kitchen pantry. That's not a good, it's just, that's not good. <laughs> don't do that, please. Build up your stores. Don't get lax now. Come up with a plan. What are items that you can buy in bulk that you will actually go through? I have 25 pounds of sugar. I won't buy another 25 pound bag of sugar for probably three months and we'll have opened this by the time I buy another one, but I'll slowly be building on it so that, okay, you know, I'm going through my first 25 pound bag of sugar and by that time I'm purchasing another one. So that's probably like three months, four months worth of sugar that I'll have on hand that we will use, we'll use it. It's not gonna just sit and go bad somewhere. And so come up with a plan. What do you guys actually use? What are you actually gonna go through? And take it in nice little bite-sized pieces because this can get really expensive. If I tried to buy everything on this list in one fell swoop, considering there's meat in here, let's, so let's take the meat out because that's a separate conversation. This would easily be 500 to $1,000 depending on the quantity. I mean, that's just, unreasonable and so if you can do it just a little at a time of course i'm talking about azure here if you don't have access to azure there's bj's there's costco there's sam's club there's all sorts of different ways that you could be shopping for these things bulk and just being prepared my mom it was my mom's idea to put the first aid kit on there but that's a good idea like make sure you've got rubbing alcohol band-aids neosporin you know whatever it is that you guys would suit you whatever you need I keep, um, I did this even before this happened, but I like to keep sti the stuff to do stitches um, up. You can buy that online, the needle and the dissolvable stitches and everything that you need to be able to administer stitches. I learned how, I, I know I'm familiar with that. I used to work at the hospital, so I've assisted in, in stitches before. Um, and then, I don't know, if you've not been following me that long, you may not know, I had a chicken with an impacted crop and so I had to cut open her crop, take everything out of it and then you better believe I stitched her back up. It was super profesh and I was so proud of myself <laughs> but I had all the stuff to do it. I was able to disinfect it properly and keep it all really nice and clean. I was able to stitch her back up. I was able to cover it properly and take really good care of the wound and that chicken is still alive and is laying me eggs. Okay so there's something to be said about having first aid stuff on hand and it not be doomsday, you know, material. Like we're not trying to prepare for the zombie apocalypse, but real life things can still happen. It's still worth having, you know, can you disinfect a wound? Can you do, can you administer stitches? Can you, or do you even have those little, um, st uh, the sticky stitches that you, that just the tape, the really sticky tape that you can use to close a wound and just put the tape? Like, do you even have are you able to take care of, of small things like that? And so a tourniquet, do you have a tourniquet, band-aids? Yeah, like I said, so it's not a bad idea. The last thing on the list that I wanna talk about is meat. My parents and I are planning on going in together on half a cow. Um, we don't have the ability to raise our own meat yet. We're working on it. Hopefully someday we'll get there. So in the meantime, um, now is the time to support your local farmers. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Now is the time to support your local farmers because they are on the other side of the COVID rush of everybody trying to purchase everything up. And so now they're like, okay, well, we've expanded our operation to try and meet the need. And now we have half the client base because nobody cares about buying 
of local raised chickens, beef, pork, milk, whatever anymore. They've gone back to Walmart, Wegmans, Kroger, Tops, and they're buying all of their stuff from the big conglomerates again. So they're feeling the sting of losing all of that business that they had by necessity through the pandemic. Now is the time to support your local farmer. Show them that you care about them not just when things are hard, but all the time. Make it a priority, not just during a pandemic or some sort of crisis, but all the time. Make it a moral standard in your family that no, actually, we don't purchase CAFO beef from the grocery store. We purchase pasture-raised beef from the local farm family who is just trying to put food on their own table as well as feed their community. These things matter, not just during a pandemic, but all the time. And so we have, I've put up, I'm in a, like I said, a bunch of Facebook groups and one of a few of them are local. So I posted in the group and I said, okay, who's selling um, organic beef? And I even said in the post, I said, I'm not necessarily looking for USDA, <laughs> like certified organic, but if you're organic, then I want to support you. And I had amazing feedback. So I have two farmers that I've been speaking with extensively that were kind of going back and forth between. So we'll make that decision soon. I'm lucky I have a very large chest freezer that I purchased four years ago now, um, back when I very first was starting to realize like, oh, I want to get into, you know, homesteading and things like that. I, Tom and I bought a chest freezer on a President's Day sale for $250. Guess how much chest freezers are going for now? In New York anyway, because my dad just priced them out. $800. So why don't you go ahead and get one now? Because they're not going to get any cheaper. And uh, I, like I told my parents, because they need one. I said, wait for like the 4th of July is coming up. Um, wait for Independence Day sale. Wait for, you know, some sort of sale so that you're not paying full, full price for it. But it's, they're expensive. It, everything has gone up. Inflation is awful. And I'm just, I'm worried about what this election season is going to do. I don't want to say that, I, you know, I just said worried. I'm worried in so much that I recognize that it's a potential thing. I'm not going to be fearful because again, I trust God, but I do think that it would behoove us to be aware and to be prepared. There, I said it. <laughs> be aware, be prepared. Don't have your head in the sand and don't think, oh, well, you know, we had the pandemic. That was the traumatic thing that happened in my generation. There is still time for more traumatic things to happen in this generation. <laughs> And I just think that we have a gift. I think the fact that we were able to see what happened with COVID and then to see how poorly it was handled, how poorly we as a people were treated and how terrible things still are afterwards, the case has already been made. I mean, it's no surprise. Like, And so I just think it's wise to take what we've already seen and learned and apply it to the now so that we can be prepared for the future. I hope that that makes sense. I know that this is sort of controversial. Please understand that this came from a good place. I really genuinely just care about you guys. And it was very much on my heart that I needed to share this because I'm doing this and I don't think it's right for me to, I don't want to gatekeep this, so to speak. Like if I'm preparing and I'm trying to be wise and make good decisions and I have a platform, I think it's only fair that I share with you guys. I'm doing this. This is why. And I think you should too. Do with that what you will. If you have anything to add, I would love to have a discussion about this down in the comments on this video. Tell me if you think I'm way off base here. Tell me if you think that I'm onto something and tell me why you think that. What are you seeing? What evidence do you have? to the, the idea that perhaps we should still be prepared and should still be caring and paying attention. Um, what are you seeing? Um, let's just be educated together and be aware and keep up with this stuff together. And um, let's support one another. Let's support our local farmers and homesteaders. And let's just do the best we can. <laughs> I'm going to end this by sharing with you something that my mom <laughs> said because I went my, I'm at my parents' house and my mom works from home. So I, I snuck up to her office and I was chatting with her before I came out here and I was like, mom, I'm nervous. And I was telling her about, you know, she already knew what it was I wanted to talk about here today. But um, 
I told her I was scared because I po I, I'm in a, a bunch of Facebook groups and in one of them somebody posted a while this was some months ago now and they said so and so YouTuber is starting to get real like doomsday preppy and I unsubscribed because I don't want to hear about that and hundreds of comments of people agreeing and it kind of took me back I was like oh I, I mean I guess but I still think it applies like I still think you can appreciate them as a homesteading channel and let them talk about the preparedness the way that they want to without taking offense to I was just very surprised that they were offended by it and so because of that it took it made me nervous making this video because I'm afraid I'm gonna be received the same way but I told her when I was telling her all of this I said but you know even outside of a doomsday prepper perspective like it people's chickens are being confiscated and dairy barns are being raided and processing plants are burning down. Like you can't deny that, like that's happening. We should still, for that reason alone, care about, you know, putting up food and, and raising our own food and being homesteaders the way that everybody's been wanting to be a homesteader for the past three years. And my mom said something, and this is where we're gonna end it. She said, the biggest middle finger you can give the government is raising your own food. And I said, facts, mama, facts. <laughs> and so that's where we're gonna leave it. Support your farmer, grow your own food, be aware, be prepared. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and for listening to this message. I hope that it inspired you to try and put up some of your own food, be aware to what's going on. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith and keep moving forward.